the Sahara Desert, hostile, wild, and where few can survive these days. But this expanding mass of sand that stretches across northern Africa used to be lush forests and swamps. It was in this environment that early man first began painting and engraving rocks in order to communicate and show their way of life. Wandering through the National Museum in Libya's capital, Tripoli, David Carlson is waiting to meet the museum's director. David works for the Trust for African Rock Art, or TARA, a charity he started in 1996 to catalogue and conserve the continent's ancient rock art. He has recently returned from various rock art sites in the country, but brings back shocking news. What we found was that uh, uh, sites which we had formerly surveyed and photographed ourselves on previous trips had, had been uh, spray painted, in other words, somebody literally got from a shop some, some spray paint and had covered the, these paintings, some of which were seven, eight, nine thousand years old, uh, covered them with modern paint, which means that they can never be repaired again. Uh, so this is a retrievable loss. David has studied and photographed the continent's rock art for over 15 years. Working together with rock art specialist Alec Campbell, the two have been able to get a number of sites listed on the UN's World Heritage List in order to raise their profile and conserve them. Rock art, uh, what it does for us is it opens windows onto, onto vanished worlds uh, in that this is so long ago, it's long before recorded history uh, even began. Uh, but yet what we find in the rock art is that there was a great sophistication uh, of uh, artistic uh, eminence even in those days, uh, like 10 or 12,000 years ago. And, and rock art is a phenomenon you find in almost every country in the world. But I would say that, that Libya has the, probably the finest, Libya and Algeria anyway, the finest rock art uh, that exists anywhere on earth, you know, and some of the oldest. So it's very, very important. But despite Tara publishing coffee table books and launching a website, many rock sites in Africa still remain unprotected. In the Sahara, harsh weather conditions and traders who remove the art for sale are an additional threat. While local communities living near the sites are being encouraged to protect the artwork in order to attract tourists without resources, not much can be achieved. In Europe, rock art sites are now heavily protected, with governments promoting them as tourist attractions, one of the most famous being Lascaux in France. This original art has been closed to the public since 1963, after fungus started to grow in the paintings. Artists were commissioned by the French government at a cost of over $1 million to make a replica of the work, which now stands 100 meters from the protected original. These days, the site limits the number of visitors to 2,000 per day, each adult paying over 12 US dollars to enter. Back at the Libyan National Museum, David and Alec are discussing their findings and future projects with the museum's director, Fatia Al Hasawi. This is one of two uh, mythical creatures which we, we always call amongst ourselves the fighting cats. Uh, but, uh, Prehistoric civilization, which includes rock art and rock carvings in different areas in the south of Libya, is very important because it tells of human history and civilization from a period in the past, from which all that remains are these artifacts. The drawings give us social portraits of the daily life of prehistoric humans. The continent's rock art gives us an insight into how our ancestors lived and thought. Its value to our heritage and history is priceless. But its future will come at a cost. The only question is, who is willing to pay?